When people think of a hearing aid as a widget, or what we would call a commodity, or just an object, they oftentimes go to places where they can just go and get other commodities or objects. And what that does is it separates the care from the device, meaning you need great care associated with the device. So oftentimes people will say, well, my friend's hearing aid doesn't work well. And I will tell them, go back and ask your friend where they got them. And if they got those hearing aids from the same place they go to buy meat, trash bags, and toilet paper, and then they expect that to work well for them, I'm not so sure they should have the highest level of confidence or that might be the source of their hearing problem. It doesn't mean if you go those places you won't get good care, but certainly when you think of the hearing aid as a commodity or a widget and not as a hearing treatment plan associated with a high quality provider, that's probably the wrong mindset to get your hearing loss well treated. everybody thanks so much for listening to fire breathing rob if you're listening to us on the youtube please subscribe share and also like this video so it can get out to more people if you're listening to us on the radio on your facebook uh twitter instagram whatever it may be thanks so much for that we really appreciate that so I'm going to get right into the interview. This is something that I've had an issue with within the past three months, but my whole life with ear issues. And we're going to be talking about this. And for the millennials that don't think this is, this is an issue, it's a huge issue. I can't tell you, and we're going to talk about with Dr. Sims about this in just a second. I can't tell you how many people I see drive down the street blaring music the cars are shaking even my car is shaking and vibrating because of the bass on the cars that are next to me which obviously down the road it's going to have a severe effect on your ears so before we even get into those issues and earwax and other things in general all things ear with dr mark j sims again he is a medical doctor and he's with the Arizona Hearing Center. He has a new book out called Listen Up. You can buy it on Amazon, but all, where all books are sold. We're going to get back into that in just a second. Dr. Sims, thanks so much for coming on. Greatly appreciate it. Sure, Rob. I appreciate being here. This is going to be a good time, and uh, hopefully people will learn something. I, I hope so, too, because I, like I said, before we even started recording, I couldn't believe the questions from millennials in general about ears in general. So I guess people are starting to pay attention, which is good. Uh, so before we get into the interview, I do have a couple of quick questions. Reading about you, I have heard about, you know, the issues you had with your brother. Right. And, and I feel like maybe that's why you got into being an ear doctor. Is that right. true? Or? Yeah, so I, I had a, a bro I'm one of five boys. I'm the youngest, but uh, my middle brother had a brain tumor when he was a teenager, and he had to get radiation to that tumor, and that led to a progressive hearing loss between from his 20s through his 40s. And uh, basically, I watched firsthand how it affected his relationship with me, his loved ones, his family. Just you know, kind of that disconnection, that frustration, um, the depression, and withdrawals from not being able to connect with people. And and that's why you know one of the things about it you can't give it back to you once you've lost it um you know it's uh one of those things that you know you're much better to protect it than you are uh you know to then trying to get it back once you've lost it well i mean you've helped thousands of people doing thousands of surgeries so the other person as i said we got so many questions i'm looking forward to asking some of these questions so let's go into that as far as hearing loss doc you know we, we've talked about this, and when we met at this conference, I, I said, this is great because, you know, I know personally, I used to have the headphones in my ears and the earbuds, and I was told by my ear doctor, not only is that bad for my ears because the, the sound obviously is blasting right into them, but right. also it's pushing the wax in, and obviously that could lead to some serious issues down the road. Uh, is that you're seeing? A, are you seeing a big age great, uh, range of like millennials, well, eighteen to thirty five, because of you know these issues? Well, they have it, but they don't do much about it. So about one in five millennials has a measurable hearing loss. Um, you know, but one of the things is 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 oftentimes people aren't aware they have hearing loss, and the reason they're not aware they have hearing loss is because we compensate for it. So when you don't hear, you don't just throw up your arms and say, "Oh, I can't hear it." What you do is is, is you look at people's mouth, so you can see the difference between wife and wipe. And so what I will say is, wearing masks has made it harder 
And then the second way people hear, which is really communication, not hearing, is context. Once they know what people are talking about, their brain kind of fills in the words, just like when you read. Like when you read, you don't read every word. You know what it's about, and you fill in the blanks. So that's why people have problems at the beginning of conversation. So you say something to them, and that's when they say what or huh or something like that. And so what I would tell you is, is people are not very good at assessing their own hearing because they don't know what they're not hearing. But is that a big case though? Because everybody's wearing those headphones now that go inside your ears. Is that what you're seeing as far as more millennials are gonna have some serious problems down yes. the road? Yeah, so you should at least take a five minute break every 60 minutes, but it's yeah. definitely gonna be an issue. I mean, and so one of the other things about those um, uh, earbuds is, is they actually can't give you um, the high tones as much as you would like. And that's actually why beats and other things sound better. And you actually don't have to make them louder. The other thing I would recommend if you're going to wear headphones to listen to music is get sound canceling headphones. And the reason is, is if you cancel the background noise, then you don't have to turn up what you want to hear as much. If there's background noise, then you have to turn it up above the background noise to hear it. So you actually have to wear them louder. So he noise canceling headsets would be the healthiest thing to do. So, you know, why do you feel like millennials aren't really getting the message for this? Is it something like it's a culture or a social issue as far as like music blasting? Even the TV is blasting sometimes. Um, I think, you know, when you look at people, regardless of generation, they tend not to access healthcare. Uh, yeah. from their in their 20s and 30s um you know i know millennials are having children later but by and large people young adults who have kids they spend their health energy on their children more than they do themselves so i think culturally people just don't utilize a lot of health care in their 20s and 30s and into their 40s and then in their 40s people usually yeah i mean if you have friends or family who are in their 40s you see they start you know oh, this doesn't work as well maybe i should go get it checked out that kind of thing so again, you, you don't know what you don't hear. So why are you going to go? So, I mean, the only way to know if your hearing's normal is to get it measured, right? right? I mean, be like you saying, I don't have high blood pressure. Well, how do you know you don't have high blood pressure? Well, the way you know you don't have high blood pressure is you measure it. It's not your perception of your blood pressure that matters. It's the objective measurement of your blood pressure that matters. And the same with your hearing. Dr. Sims here on Fire Breathing Rob. The book is Listen Up, Get It Where All Books Are Sold. We see that when, and you talked about this just a minute ago about people not recognizing it. When do you think, because I was always told, maybe it was just the way I was brought up that you go to the ear doctor once a year. Do you feel like that's how, you know, once a year people should go or should, you know, every probably, couple? Probably but, not in their, you know, I mean, look, if people want a baseline, get a baseline. If they think they've, yeah. a, use their ears, go get it checked, right? Uh, by and large, you know, uh, hearing loss, nerve hearing loss tends to have an onset in people's late 50s and 60s. So I would say somebody over their 60s should, should see an ear doctor, see where they are and perhaps be seen on a regular basis. I think people where you are, if you're like, hey, I wanna make sure I'm healthy all around, then yeah, I'd, I'd go to check. If you're in a profession where, you know, hearing matters, and frankly, I don't know what jobs hearing doesn't matter, but if it's, you know, I mean, there are some where it really matters, uh, musicians, uh, people in the, uh, in the uh, uh, space, those people certainly need to uh, get their hearing checked. Uh, to make sure that they are. And, and I tell you, you know, going on that uh, conference, I can't tell you how many people in radio told me they had a hearing loss. They all, they were like, oh yeah, I abused my ears when I was younger in my radio career. It's like, I mean, it was the exception when somebody said they hadn't had hearing loss. Well, I'll tell you what, even before we spoke, but even after we spoke at that conference, I refused to use those uh, earbuds anymore. I and you know obviously you said it but I've talked to other ear doctors I've went to in the past and they said don't put that crap in your ears because like you said it's, it's either going to push the wax in but not only that it's also going to hurt your hearing down the road so I've kind of gave it up fully okay. because, go ahead. sound in moderation is okay right and so it's really about not going over you know, uh, in both uh, iOS, the Apple platform and the Android platform, there are ways you can set the limits on how loud they go. Right. So that would be the other way would be set the limit and then wear them or something like that. But I think the natural tendency is you're out, you're, you're riding your bike in traffic. You mm -hmm. want to be able to hear the music, not the traffic. So people have a tendency to kind of creep it up to where it is appreciable sound to them. They're not really thinking, oh, is this harmful sound to me? It's just I'm turning it up to the point where I can hear it.
Uh, right. So if they are using guns or even we going back to that car scenario, if you're doing that constantly, isn't that going to that's going to speed up, you know, your loss of hearing, correct? Totally. Right. Yeah. And so obviously the car, they want it that loud uh, in the guns. If you if you are a shooter, I tell people to wear plugs and muffs um, both. Uh, and what I will tell you is, is most of the injuries I see from uh, shooting ranges, it's, I always tell people, it's usually another shooter who discharges their weapon when they're not supposed to. So unfortunately, your ears are only as safe as the stupidest guy on the range. But so what is like the earliest age of something like that happening where, you know, there's constantly blasting music or in a job maybe where it's construction, where it's extremely loud all the well, time? I think teenagers... It starts with teenagers, certainly. Wow. Teenagers have, there are teenagers with hearing loss, certainly. And that's just from stuff that they have could have prevented. Correct, correct. Wow. And, and, you know, part of it is, is everybody has a personal device now, right? And so they actually, mm. um, uh, they get to control kind of their own environment. And that's why, you know, I, I don't know how many people do it, but there, those sound controls that I'm talking about on the iOS and the Android, they actually can become parental control controls. So if you have the parental controls on the, on the device of your child, you actually can lock the sound so it can't go that loud. And you probably need to, because otherwise I don't know how you referee it. Yeah, no, you, you can't. Uh, Dr. Mark Sims here on Fire Breathing Rob. Again, the book is Listen Up, and I do want to get into that, but I just want to jump into a couple more uh, audience questions uh, sure. as far as what they said. So a lot of them, and, and we, this goes into hearing aids. So why do you feel like people that are older, and even if young people have to wear them, uh, I know there's not a lot of young people wearing hearing aids, but if, you know, like you said, you've had key kids that have been teenagers that have lost their hearing. So why do you feel like they're kind of against hearing aids? I know they have the hearing aids that go above the ears and the ones that go inside. Uh, what is the better hearing aid? But why why are people against well, I, it? I think it, dep it depends on your phase of life. Uh, teenagers don't like attention drawn to them in a negative fashion, no matter yeah. what. So there's a lot of peer pressure. So we have a lot of teenagers who need hearing aids, stop wearing them. And then they'll typically come back in their early 20s to wearing them because employability becomes much more important than what your peers think, right? So right. you want to be able to earn a living more than what your peers there's an overall stigma uh, that uh, hearing aids represent uh, being old. I mean, there are a couple yeah. things I tell people. One is, is I tell people, even though you don't have hearing aids, people see your hearing loss. In other words, they know you don't hear. I mean, if you keep on asking people to repeat themselves, what do you think they think? They think either you have a hearing loss or you're just not that smart, right? And they're not going to engage with you. So uh, people see people's hearing loss. The second thing is, is, is I tell people, you know, getting hearing aids is a low confidence experience. So you're not of the demographic, but once you hit about 60, um, your mailbox will start to get flooded with offers for hearing aids. And, and so people aren't sure what to do about it. And then the last thing is, is unfortunately, when you really look at hearing loss, so 20% of people who have hearing loss treat it, of those, only a third are well-treated, which means about 8% of people with hearing loss have treated their hearing loss well. So when somebody needs hearing aids, they talk to one of their friends and their friend says, I got them, they didn't work. Oh, you know, uh, my husband got them, he still can't hear well. Because so many people's hearing loss is not well-treated, people don't think they work, but they do work if they're used correctly. So what should we have like the music and the TV around? I guess every TV is probably different as far as like number wise. But it's really normalization versus your peers, right? So if somebody yeah. comes in and says to you, man, that is so loud on a consistent basis, it probably means there's a thing. The other thing is, is people with hearing loss, they tend to migrate towards news and sports. And the reason is, is in news and sports, just like you and I, one person speaks at a time. And sports, you don't even need to listen to the, new, the, the sportscaster. In sitcoms, rapid dialogue, sound, laugh tracks, music, sound effects, it's very difficult for people with hearing loss to track that. So they naturally migrate away from action movies and uh, sitcoms. Wow, I wouldn't even have thought of that. Interesting. So I do have a question from that 80 year old. So he writes that he got hearing aids that go inside his ears from the VA. Uh, he said they were great. They cost, he said, about five to six thousand dollars. He thankfully didn't pay for them because he was in the VA. But he said it makes his ears hurt and makes them sore. Uh, and that's why he's not wearing them anymore. He's going to take them back so they can mold them for someone else. What would you say to him? Is it just because they weren't molded well? Or what, what is the problem? You get what you pay for. 
<laughs> so I mean, those are, you think that yeah, the reality is, is hearing aids that don't fit are useless, right? right? I mean, if I gave you a set of free shoes and they were two sizes too small, what good are those, right? And so the, the, the issue is, is, is he got hearing aids, but he didn't get his hearing loss well treated. So he's still walking around with a hearing loss that's not rehabilitated. So, you know, a more stark example is, is say you lost your leg, right? And if you had a prosthesis that didn't fit, then you'd be hopping up and down on one foot. That's pretty onerous, right? Well, from a hearing point of view, this man is hopping up and down on one foot. It's a lot of work. And so he has an unrehabilitated disability. And so the problem is, is unfortunately, you kind of probably need somebody who has some skin in the game in terms of quality uh, to, to get it to the point where somebody's interested in making sure that it fits right, it's adjusted right, it actually treats your hearing loss well. There are a lot of different things. You know, I'll give you an example, you know, uh, home, home repair, right? You want to build a brick wall in your backyard. You or I can go to Lowe's, Home Depot. We can dump bricks in our back. Fundamentally, the quality of that brick wall is going to be based on the mason. And so if you got a mason who didn't charge you anything, you're probably not going to get a very good brick wall. You really, it's the skill of the craftsman of the clinician that matters, not the devices. So that's why my mantra is treat your hearing loss, don't get hearing aids. Right. Well, right. he, but so. The doctor matters, yeah. right? Different doctors matter. The quality of the doctor matters. They're not all the same, right? Yeah, I, I'm not sure much about it. I know he said he went to the VA, so I <laughs> I know some VAs are better than others as far as that goes. So I'm not sure, you know, he said they cost $5,000. I don't know if that's cheap or not expensive. Well, the or... VA tells you that's how much they're worth, right? Because oh, okay, yeah. they're trying to get you to understand the value. But the reality is, is I, I mean, there are some very good practitioners at the VA and there are probably some poor ones. And so it really comes down to that personal person. So think about home, you know, what home warranties are, you know, where you can get your, your home fixed with a warranty, right? So when you get that, you don't, and say your toilet breaks, you don't pick the toilet and you don't pick the plumber. Right. And that's why a lot of people don't use home warranties because they don't want any old plumber putting any old toilet in their bathroom. They want to know the plumber and they want to know what toilet gets put in. Well, it's kind of the same concept that you aren't really picking the person and you're not. And that's why I said, you get what you pay for. Uh, before we move into the second part of the interview, as far as the wax in the book, uh, I do want to ask these sure. last two questions. So what practices should we put into place to make sure that we preserve that hearing so when you're 60, 70, or 80 years old, you can actually hear what the heck is going on? Well, you know, uh, avoid loud noises, uh, activities that you know are going to be loud, concerts, shootings, things like that, uh, power tools, um, you should be able to, you should use hearing protection. I mean, you can pretty much Google, like, when should I wear hearing protection? Um, you know, I tell people if they're really concerned, even when you're, if you're going to mow your lawn, blow your lawn, something like that, put on head muff, ear muffs to protect your hearing. So it's really when you're going to be around uh, loud noises and some people purposely go into those environments. So, you know, I'd be, I'd be careful about it. Last audience. And occupationally, if you're go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry, if you're a loud occupation, if your work involves loudness, protect it too. Mm -hmm. Uh, last question, as far as the audience question goes, uh, obviously with COVID, we've been talking a lot about mental health on this program, but in people with people in general. So with that said, do you feel like there's, you know, a lot of people have anxiety and depression now, they've been cooped up in the house. Do you feel like, uh, you know, with those issues that it could affect as far as, e you know, issues with your ears in general? Well, I think there are multiple things. First off, People who have hearing loss are anxious because they get anxious about going into social circumstances where right. they can't understand or communicate. Uh, they also, there is an association between untreated hearing loss and dementia, and it has to do with uh, brain uh, power and use. So the number one thing you can do to prevent dementia is treat your hearing loss. The last thing is, is masks have made communication more difficult. And so people are uh, realizing they have a hearing loss or they're more disconnected because, you know, talking through a mask, it's much harder. I mean, we're all asking maybe somebody to repeat themselves through a mask just because it, it decreases the volume and takes away all of that facial expressions that are part of nonverbal communication. Right. I want to go into uh, issues with the wax because we got quite a few questions on that. Sure. If you feel comfortable <laughs> answering some of this. Yeah, that's fine. Not... I talk about it all the time. Okay. So all the, right. the first so... thing I'll tell everybody, Q-tips oh, are the tools of the devil. 
and look on the back of a Q-tip box and it says, do not stick in your ear. <laughs> I so agree. I, direct. I've never used a Q-tip in my life, actually. Thank, knock on wood, thank God for that. <laughs> so the only things I've done bad is, uh, you know, use those headphones, but we've kind of got away from that, thankfully. They're uh, worse the things. Yeah, I agree. So the last, the questions on wax, and we'll go through these quick because I do want to get on to the book. Um, and these are some audience questions also with that. Like I said, how do we keep our ears clean? No one really talks about that. Your ears clean themselves. So the wax will naturally migrate out. And so most of the things that we do to clean our ears actually pushes the wax in. So if you allow it to just come to the outer part of your ear, it'll clean itself. There are some people who are excessive wax producers and they need to get it clean. But by and large, the reason people have wax problems is they stick something in their ear that pushes the wax in. But the ears are self-cleaning. People have been around a lot longer than Q-tips, right? And so the ears clean themselves. It's great design. Well, thank you for saying that because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, uh, if you want to clean your ears, you know, you could put some soap. And I'm like, that doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> It melts it. The, the warm water melts it. I mean, you know, the, the fundamental uh, thing is, is, you know, Q-tips are bright white. So when you put them in, they come out soiled no matter what on purpose. If you, one of the things people say is I want my ears dry, right? They don't like the wet feeling. So if you want to dry your ears, you take your opposite hand, pull on your ear and take a hair dryer and hold it an arm's length away and blow warm, dry air into your ear for a minute or two. That'll dry out your ears without sticking anything in it. Fair enough. Nice and easy. <laughs> <laughs> These are a lot of easy things that people don't even think about, and I don't know why, but thank you for telling it, because hopefully people sure. will do that instead of sticking crazy things in their ears to uh, you know, nope. have some serious issues. I'm a issues. waxologist. In, in medicine, they call it serum, and so I tell people I'm a serumonologist. I haven't figured it out yet, but I, I want to try to figure out how many pounds of wax I've removed in my career, oh, and it's literally pounds at this point. It's crazy. So what is the best way to make sure that we don't have a wax buildup? Well, there's three different types of wax buildup. There's one wax buildup that causes hearing loss. That needs to be resolved. Okay. The second type of wax buildup is one that I remove because I want to see your whole ear. So I can't see through the wax. That doesn't have to be removed. And then the third is the most common is people are afraid their ears are dirty. That doesn't matter. The wax is there for a reason. It's healthy and good. So the three things wax does. One it's a mechanical barrier. It actually protects your ear canal skin. Two, it has an acidity, a pH that kills off bacteria and fungus. And three, it's sticky. So it prevents dirt and things from going all the way down your ear. So it's actually very protective. It's there for a reason. So what is it with these people that, you know, and I know this uh, personally, cause I've had issues with my ears. My doctors told me to use d for wax. And also they have that syringe. So they say, use the d and then fire that syringe with water. And every time I've done that in the past, it makes me feel dizzy as hell. <laughs> yeah, that's because uh, if you want it to not make you dizzy, it should be your body temperature because if it's too hot or too cold, it'll make you dizzy. So if you want to not be dizzy, put it in your pocket for 20 minutes in a bottle. Then once it's body temperature, it won't make you dizzy. Okay. But is that, should that be done uh, or should you just I'm not a wait? big fan. I'd, I'd much rather clean it. I see people who get holes in their eardrums from irrigating their own ears. Wow, that's extremely scary. Well, thank you for telling me. So I, I won't personally do that again. And I hope people listening know that that's true because I know they sell those over the counter with those little yeah. balls. Yeah, so, yeah. wow, that's really scary. Gosh. All right. <laughs> now that you kind of freaked me out with that, uh, we'll move <laughs> on. <to laughs> we'll move on to this is a long question that I got. Um, okay, so let me start off with this. It says, I had a wax issue and the doctor got it out with the device. Um, it says not the device with the water. So I, and I'm reading this <laughs> not in great grammar because this is what was written to me. So <laughs> I'm trying to level with you there. But anyway, so the per person said they went to the doctors for a wax issue. They, they didn't use the water. The, the doctor went in there and removed it with some kind of device. It says the doctor bruised the eardrum. They were given oxafloxing. Yeah, which is an antibiotic. Uh -huh. All right. To clean the bloody ear uh, and the bruised eardrum. But I, I have still been feeling dizzy for two months. I still, I do suffer from depression and anxiety. It says, is this, um, is this the re re a reason for the dizziness 
or could it be the anxiety and depression? I went back to the hospital again on Sunday and the doctor said, I have cream-like stuff in both ears and the doctor gave me the same oxifloxin medicine. What should I do? She, uh, that patient needs their ear examined again and cleaned. I would go to an ear, nose and throat because they have all the tools they need. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that the dizziness is associated with the ear cleaning. Okay, so you don't think they did the think dizziness would probably be with the anxiety and depression to clarify that then? Yeah, I mean, I would just tell you, I don't think it's from the cleaning. But okay, yes, okay, fair enough. Okay, well, thank you for answering that. Sorry, that was a extremely yeah, long question. Go ahead. How do we make sure that we don't overdevelop earwax in our ears? Should we go to the doctors multiple times a year? If your hearing doesn't change, you don't have too much wax. Okay. All right. So now we'll move on to the book. And thank you for answering those sure. questions. I know some of them were a little repetitive. No, no, um, it's, 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 it's actually a very practical thing that people want to know about. Okay, great. Well, thank you for that. And I know I learned personally a lot, especially with that, you know, the syringe thing that they say to right. put in your ear. That's extremely scary. <laughs> Can't get over that. Uh, that. But they sell products on the market that are scary all the time. So yeah. and bad for your health. So makes sense. Well, think of um, all the vices that are illegal, right? We're expanding right. our vices right now. We're not, we're not narrowing them. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. So what made you write Listen Up? So, um, you know, I do these ear surgeries and uh, I've done a lot. And uh, some of the patients that I do surgeries on, their hearing's better, but they still need hearing aids. And I would say to them, go get hearing, you need your hearing loss treated. And they'd come back, you know, I'd write that down in their chart and they'd come back a year later and they wouldn't have hearing aids. And I go, remember the last time, let me show you the chart. You need to get hearing aids. And they said, yeah, I know. I went to three different places and they didn't work or, you know, basically what I realized was I was trying to give my patients to go do something that was actually pretty hard to do. It's very hard to effectively treat your hearing loss. And so through dialoguing with them, learning more about it, kind of stepping, you know, I still uh, am very interested in the surgical side, but kind of delving deeper into something that's more medical than surgical, um, I kind of tried to figure out why this all is. And so, you know, I would tell people, I'd explain to them why their, their hearing loss isn't well treated, which, so a lot of the stuff in the book is stuff I tell patients in the examination room. So finally, I was like, well, you know, if I want to affect more people, I should write a book because then it's not just the people who can come see me in my examination room that can be affected. I can, other people can understand how to effectively treat their hearing loss, why it matters and how to go about it. So I know you said about a lot of surgeries. So what kind of surgeries do you usually do? Is it, it's mostly on hearing loss then I assume? Yeah, ear, ear drum repair, ear bone repairs, infection resolution, tumors, those types of things. So that's one of the things, wow. like when you look at the number of people who need me from a surgical point of view, like, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say out of a hundred people have ear problems, maybe one or two need me. The other 99, you know what they need? They need their hearing loss treated with hearing aids. And so in the end, the lion's share of people with ear problems need the book more than they need me. And so the point is I'm trying to instill that information so other people can learn how to take care of their hearing well. What do you hope for people from my generation as far as millennials learn from the book? Uh, that your hearing is precious. It needs to be treated appropriately. And the reality is, is it's a good book to help you help your parents treat their hearing loss. Because right. they're all, they're all, I mean, you know, the whole baby boom and after yeah. is moving into that age. And by and large, many of the millennials have parents who, you know, I mean, you know, they're going to have the same, the apple does not fall far from the tree. They have hearing loss. You're probably going to have hearing loss. And, and so there are some of the people who come in to get their hearing loss treated by me. They'll say, oh, I watched my, my mother or my father with hearing loss and how bad it was untreated. I don't want to be that person. Some of them, some of them are just as bad as their parents. In other words, they get it not treated as much as they do. So for you guys, it's awareness of protection and awareness of significance because it is associated with memory problems and dementia, untreated hearing loss. So if you want to live a healthier into the latter part of your life, you should make sure your hearing's good. And you know, if you want to stay connected with your parents and they have a hearing loss, help them get their hearing loss treated. Dr. Sims, where should people find more about you? Where can they find so more about you? In terms you? of the book, it has a website. It's called listenuphearing.com. Okay. And so there's actually a chapter you can download uh, and look, there's a, a, a audio chapter you can look, get more information. So that's about the book. My clinical practice is uh, Arizona Hearing Center. So it's www.azhear.com. So uh, more about me, we have a YouTube channel. So there's actually a lot of these questions are answered there too. So there's a lot of resources and information. And so 
um, you know, and there's ways you can ask questions and send information. So glad to, you know, field any questions from people. And thanks so much for answering all those questions. Oh, thanks, Rob. It's great. It's it, people need to know. I'm glad here to educate. It's yeah, awesome. I, like I said, I couldn't believe uh, how many people wanted to uh, know about these issues, but it's great. And we'll end with that again, uh, Dr. Mark Sims. He is a medical doctor, hearing doctor at Arizona Hearing Center. Again, listen up, hearing.com. Definitely check out the book. It's worth the read. And for people listening that think this is, you know, not a big deal, it truly is because the people that don't think it's a big deal of the people that are going to be suffering down the road, the people that are blasting the music and putting the earphones in their ears and blasting the hell out of it. So, Dr. Sims, I appreciate all you're doing, and I hope to have you on again. I think this is great. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Have a great day.